Picture an aircraft that looks like it flew straight out of a science fiction novel, with twin booms stretching back from a sleek cockpit and a propeller spinning behind, pushing it through the skies. This is the Saab J-21, a fighter that captured the spirit of Swedish ingenuity during World War II. Born from a neutral nation's need to defend its skies, it was a bold design that married cutting-edge technology with a quirky, almost alien appearance. Unless you're an aviation enthusiast, you might not know much about this Swedish marvel, but it's a plane that deserves its moment in the spotlight. After all, how many fighters can claim they came with an ejection seat before most pilots even knew what one was? To understand this unique machine, let's journey back to the late 1930s, when Sweden faced a world on the brink of war and decided to take its defense into its own hands. Sweden's neutrality during World War II was a delicate balancing act, requiring a military capable of deterring any aggressor without provoking conflict. By 1939, the Swedish Air Force, known as Flagvapnet, was in a tough spot. Its fighter fleet relied heavily on aging biplanes, like the Gloucester Gladiator, sturdy but outclassed by the sleek monoplanes dominating European skies. Importing modern aircraft was nearly impossible. The United States had embargoed deliveries of fighters like the Seversky P-35, and even Italy's Fiat CR-42 biplanes couldn't meet Sweden's needs. The government, alarmed by the escalating global tension, launched an ambitious rearmament program to bolster its defenses. This was no small task for a nation with limited industrial capacity, but Sweden turned to its young aircraft manufacturer, Svenska Aeroplan Aktiebolaget, or Saab, founded in 1937 in Trollhutten. Saab's mission was clear. Design a fighter that could match the performance of aircraft, like the Messerschmitt Bf 109, ensuring Sweden could protect its airspace. Leading this effort was engineer Fried Vonström, a visionary who saw an opportunity to push the boundaries of aviation design. The J-21's development began in earnest in 1939, driven by the urgent need for a high-performance fighter. Wanstrom's team explored various configurations, but one concept stood out, a pusher-propeller design where the engine sat behind the cockpit, driving a propeller that pushed the aircraft forward. This layout offered a clear forward view for the pilot and allowed heavy armament to be mounted in the nose, a significant advantage in dogfights. The twin-boom fuselage, with two slender tails extending rearward, gave the aircraft its distinctive silhouette, unlike anything else in the skies. However, this unconventional design posed a serious challenge. How could a pilot safely bail out without being drawn into the spinning propeller? Early ideas were wild. Some engineers suggested explosives to jettison the propeller or even detach the entire engine. Hopefully, someone was joking when they proposed that one. Saab turned to Bofors, a leading Swedish arms manufacturer, to develop a practical solution, setting the stage for one of the aircraft's most groundbreaking features. Choosing an engine was another hurdle. Saab initially considered the British Bristol Taurus radial engine, known for its reliability, but wartime restrictions made it unavailable. The American Pratt and Whitney R. 1830 Twin Wasp was a strong contender, offering 1,200 horsepower. But supply issues from across the Atlantic were a constant concern. In a stroke of strategic foresight, Sweden secured a license to produce the German Daimler-Benz DB605B a 12-cylinder inverted V engine that powered the Messerschmitt BF-109. This engine, delivering 1,475 horsepower, was a powerhouse, but it was notoriously temperamental. Swedish engineers at Volvo Aero, based in Stockholm, faced a daunting task, refining the engine's fuel injection and cooling systems to ensure reliability in Sweden's harsh climate. By 1942, the design was taking shape, with the first prototype under construction at Saab's Linköping facility. The team worked tirelessly, knowing that Sweden's neutrality depended on their success. The prototype's construction was a marvel of collaboration between Saab's engineers and Sweden's industrial base. The aircraft's airframe combined metal and wood, reflecting the resource constraints of wartime Sweden. The wings, designed for laminar flow to reduce drag, were built with a wooden core, covered in stressed aluminum skin, a technique that balanced strength and weight. The twin booms, made of steel tubing, provided structural rigidity, 
while keeping the tail assembly light. By July 1943, the first prototype, designated J-21, was ready for its maiden flight. Saab's chief test pilot, Klaus Smith, took the controls at Linkoping's Malmen Airfield. The flight was a nerve-wracking affair. Engineers had recommended full flaps for takeoff, a decision that nearly sent the aircraft crashing into the runway's end. On landing, the brakes failed, forcing Smith to deploy an anti-spin parachute, only for the landing gear to collapse. Talk about a baptism by fire for a test pilot. Despite these setbacks, the flight revealed the J-21's potential, with Smith praising its responsive controls and impressive speed. Testing continued through 1943, with two additional prototypes and a static test airframe built to refine the design. Stability issues at high speeds were a concern, requiring adjustments to the tail surfaces and center of gravity. The landing gear, a tricycle configuration with a nose wheel, was another headache, prone to collapsing under stress. Engineers at Saab's Trollhattan plant worked around the clock, reinforcing the gear and improving its retraction mechanism. By 1944, the aircraft was nearing production readiness, but bureaucratic delays in Stockholm slowed progress. The Swedish Air Force demanded rigorous testing to ensure the J-21 could operate in sub-zero temperatures and on rough airfields, a nod to Sweden's challenging geography. Hopefully, the accountants didn't mind the extra fuel bills for those winter trials. By late 1944, the aircraft passed its final evaluations, and production began, with the first units slated for delivery in 1945. The Saab J-21 was a striking machine, with a design that turned heads wherever it flew. Its wingspan measured 11.6 meters, or 38 feet 1 inch, and its length was 10.45 meters, or 34 feet 3 inches. Standing 3.96 meters, or 12 feet 12 inches tall, it had a compact yet robust profile. The wings, spanning 22.2 square meters, or 239 square feet, were optimized for high-speed performance with a slight dihedral for stability. The heart of the J-21 was its Daimler-Benz D B605B engine. License built by Volvo Aero in Stockholm, this liquid-cooled engine drove a three-bladed pusher propeller, delivering a top speed of 641 kilometers per hour, or 398 miles per hour, and a cruising speed of 450 kilometers per hour, or 280 miles per hour. Maintaining that engine in a pusher configuration must have been a mechanic's nightmare. Hope they had plenty of wrenches on hand. The armament was a standout feature, concentrated in the nose for maximum effectiveness. The J21A1 variant mounted 120mm Hispano Suiza Aachen M-41 a cannon with 60 rounds and 413.2mm Aachen M-39. A machine guns with 350 rounds for the inner pair and 325 for the outer pair. This gave the aircraft a formidable punch, capable of engaging enemy fighters or ground targets. Later variants, like the A21A3, upgraded to a Bofors Aachen M-45 cannon with 140 rounds and could carry bombs or rockets, transforming the fighter into a versatile attack platform. The ejection seat, developed by Bofors in Karlskoga, was a pioneering feature using compressed air to launch the pilot clear of the propeller. Tested rigorously on a Saab B-17 bomber, it was a lifesaver, though early models required nerves of steel to trust it. The tricycle landing gear, with the nose wheel retracting backward and the main gear folding into the booms, improved ground handling, but those early collapses must have kept pilots eye on edge. And ow, oh, the aircraft's construction blended innovation with practicality. The fuselage, a semi-monocoque structure, used aluminum skin over a steel frame, with wooden panels in non-critical areas to conserve metal. The twin booms, connected by a horizontal stabilizer, housed the tail control surfaces, including two vertical rudders for yaw control. The cockpit, positioned at the front, offered excellent visibility, with a sliding canopy that pilots could open in flight. The cooling system, with radiators integrated into the wings, was a clever design, Though it required careful maintenance to prevent leaks, one quirky flaw was the limited rearward visibility, a drawback in dogfights. Hopefully, pilots had a good neck for looking over their shoulders. The J-21's empty weight was 3,250 kilograms, 
or 7,165 pounds, with a maximum takeoff weight of 5,000 kilograms, or 11,023 pounds, supported by a robust landing gear with shock absorbers. When the J-21 entered service in December 1945, it was assigned to the Sveo Wing, or F-8, at Barkerby, near Stockholm. A total of 54 J-21A1 variants were built, followed by 124 J-21A2 models from 1946 to 1947. The A-21A3, introduced in 1947, saw 119 units produced, equipped for both fighter and attack roles. These aircraft were stationed at bases like Gota Wing, or F-9, in Save, Kalmar Wing, or F-12, in Kalmar, and Housing A Wing, or F-15, in Söderhamn. The northernmost air base, Lulia Wing, or F-21, in Lulia, operated the attack variant exclusively. Although designed as a fighter, the J-21 often took on ground attack duties, carrying bombs and rockets for simulated strikes against ground targets. Sweden's neutrality meant it never saw combat, but it played a critical role in training exercises and air patrols. One memorable anecdote comes from a 1946 training exercise over the Baltic Sea. Pilot Lieutenant Eric Nilsson, flying a J-21A1 from Gota Wing, encountered severe icing during a high-altitude patrol. With the canopy fogging and controls sluggish, Nielsen relied on his training to descend safely, landing at save with ice still clinging to the wings. His quick thinking saved the aircraft, earning him a commendation and a few extra cups of coffee from grateful mechanics. The J-21's service was not without challenges. Its high landing speed of 180 kilometers per hour, or 112 miles per hour, demanded skilled pilots, especially on Sweden's short runways. Ground crews also grumbled about the engine maintenance, tucked awkwardly behind the cockpit. Hopefully, they had a good sense of humor to go with those long hours. By 1947, the aviation world was shifting to jet propulsion, and Saab saw an opportunity to extend the J-21's life. Engineers at Linkoping began converting existing airframes to use the de Havilland Goblin turbojet, creating the J-21R. This required a major overhaul, with over 50% of the airframe redesigned to accommodate the jet engine. The first J-21R prototype flew on March 10, 1947, piloted by Aki Sunden, achieving a top speed of 800 km per hour, or 497 miles per hour. 60 units were produced, designated A21RA and A21RB, with the latter powered by a Swedish-built Goblin 3 engine, delivering 3,300 pounds of thrust. These jet variants served primarily in the ground attack role, but their limited range, 118 miles when fully loaded, was a drawback. One pilot, Captain Lars Bergström, noted that flying the J-21R felt like riding a rocket, though he wished it had a bit more fuel for those long patrols. The J-21's service life was relatively short, as jet technology advanced rapidly. By 1954, the piston engine versions were retired, replaced by the de Havilland Vampire and Saab 29 Tunnen, Sweden's first true jet fighter. The J-21R, followed by 1956, as newer jets like the Saab 32. Lanson took over, despite its brief tenure, the J-21 was a workhorse, logging thousands of hours in training and patrols, ensuring Sweden's skies remained secure during the early Cold War. Its reliability was remarkable, with a service ceiling of 11,000 meters, or 36,089 feet, and a range of 750 kilometers, or 466 miles, allowing it to cover Sweden's vast airspace. The Saab, J. 21's legacy is one of innovation and resilience. It was the only frontline fighter of World War II with a pusher configuration and one of the first to feature a standard ejection seat, a feature that saved countless lives in later aircraft. Its conversion to jet power was a rare achievement, shared only with the Soviet Yakovlev Yak-15. The aircraft paved the way for Saab's future successes, providing critical experience that led to the Saab 29 Tunnen, which flew in 1948, and the revolutionary Saab 35 Draken in 1955. Today, only a few J-21 survive, with examples like Rod Rudolph preserved at the Flying Vapen Museum in Linköping. For aviation fans, it's a chance to see a piece of Swedish history immortalized in museum displays, 
and even featured in flight simulators like War Thunder, where players can take its controls. Hopefully, the next time you spot one, you'll give a nod to this quirky pioneer that kept Sweden's skies safe.